The Dev Diary a few months on, where are we up to, what is going down with it, and there's lots of things to look into. Hello everybody, welcome to the second video of Friday and I hope you're doing well. Now here's the thing, the Dev Diary was put out a long time ago to address a lot of fundamental problems the game had, from a point of players having pain points and as well different things from the rigmarole of this game feeling more like a full-time job than a actual pastime and fun element to it. And in this video we're going to be deep diving a lot of the stuff that Kabam have put out in what was called the Dev Diary Full Checkup. This should be out on the forums so go and check on the forums if you want to read with it and we'll kind of discuss things. I'm going to pick up elements from this so you know um, read along at your own leisure but as well I'll be kind of responding back give my own opinion on things especially from what Kabam have said they've done against what they're still yet to do and see if they are, you know, making a bit of a hash of things. Since May, I can definitely feel that the game has improved from elements of things with Act 6, Act 6, Act 6.2, Act 6.3, and I think they're starting to work on Act 6.5 being addressed and these kind of fine tuning that's being done in order to make the experience with endgame content better. Abyss of Legends is still something of the coveted thing to do and that's something that I've recently done and I will start to do a lot more of that especially towards the end point of the year uh, and as well just trying to like balance again, live stream it more and, and stuff so, uh, so yeah that's the thing. Cavalier difficulty has been a very hit and miss element especially from where the rewards hit the player base uh, from an interest level and as well from a time grind perspective because that's the thing it still takes a good amount of time and I think it's only been this month that Kabam have understood that, addressed it and as well the pace in which that's done does leave it open for a lot of content but the end game uh, side of things they've they've kind of not done quite as much so for you people that are done with everything and looking to spend and looking to get more done in the future it it's going to take a lot longer which I guess sucks for a lot of players of that nature. Okay let's look at the dev diary and in particular what's going on. Back Issues 5 was released which is good. Variants are the most enjoyable if you can complete them in um, two to three weeks. You know if you take them easy. I know a lot of players rush and like 100% them in like the first two days and that's cool you know that's that how you play the game is up to you. Uh, for me I like to take my time and stream a little bit as well. I'm trying, trying, I'm trying to emphasize now, stream a lot more of the most end game stuff, just so that it's not something I've ever done in the past, so I want to kind of commit to that, and yeah, things are doing well, it's good to see good turnout as well for those things, especially when I did uh, Abyss of Legends and whatnot. So, when it comes to Act 6, I still think there's some work that needs to be done with uh, Chapter 3 and Chapter 4, but, uh, you know, kabam, say otherwise on that factor. The fight reworks, yeah, I do think this there's meant to be like a bit, there should be a bit more. Um, I think Kabam are, are going to say it's a done deal, which I don't know if I agree with. Act 6.2.5 is just a good example of something that needs to be changed. So I don't know why that wasn't um, overly looked into, but it's good for like further progression and um, other endgame players doing stuff when it comes to uh, Book 2, Chapter 1, which is out on December 9th. Which is great. That's going to be good for endgame players. They need something. They didn't get Summer of Pain. So that's kind of disappointing. But uh, it's good to know that as well the music side of things is going to be improved. Because you need better music. Something new. Something to freshen up. And that will be good. The Summer Smackdown. And across the summer we rolled out some classic bosses that culminated in Omega Red. 31 bosses in one run that 85,801 managed to take down. That's good numbers, right? I'm I'm kind of pretty happy to read that. That is 85,801 people that were able to do the Omega Boss Rush. As it's it's one of these things, as you you do worry about the extent of how much the game is is played. But if that's if that's the case that we get you know hundred thousand, um, this is um, and you know I've played players. So that's that's close, that's close to good numbers of loyalty, especially with a game that's been out for five years to still have that loyalty. Uh, and you know you could say something like, oh, you know, World of Warcraft and other games like that. This is a mobile game. Like, come on! I don't, I don't even think that actively on a daily basis that any other mobile game or mobile Marvel game gets this level of uh, response. There's, um, I think, mobile Marvel because you know you look at other games like PUBG Mobile, Mobile Legends, uh, you name it. Like, there's, there, there's probably like more, more out there. But it's like it's very specific. So. We'll have to really see. Um, it'd be interesting to see where Marvel Realm charts with that stuff as well. Being a, a new game, it, it gets the buzz early on. Summer of Pain, I know players are interested with like this and like seeing the um, the extent of 
Like, what's next for Endgame players? Because that's that's the thing. There was a lot of content put out, so yeah, not good. Uh, this was just what we outlined in the roadmap. On top of this, we also rolled out the summer showdown. Uh, summer showdown, man. I I just don't I don't know if it was worth it. Was it worth it to put that content out? Part of me says yes, but. I'm overriding with the sense of no. I don't, I don't know if it was, looking back at it, was it any good? It's just, I don't know. I, don't, I just didn't feel, I didn't resonate. And that's the thing, is popularity even now is kind of waning. So it's like, yeah, not good. Uh, future content is important. So back issue six is coming and coming soon. So that I think will be December, which will be amazing. I'm look, really looking forward to uh, a new back issues. There's gonna be some great stuff like Hopefully another 10% uh, or more, 25, I think it was 25%, wasn't it, of the tier 5 class catalyst. So that would be good. So yeah, um, good start. Um, there are some things I would like to have seen done. Summer of Pain for those endgame players, but apart from that, you know, seems okay. Now one of the other key things to the game is going to be alliances. And what really is on offer for those that are alliances, any tools, any improvements, things that are going to make things better. Are they going to scrap Alliance Wars, which is something that I would have loved to have seen a lot longer, uh, a lot longer, a lot more than uh, than running uh, additional seasons. But if that's what Kabam are doing in order to, whilst they design something, then I guess I can take it. But that's the thing. So Kabam on the subject of alliances are going to talk about the fact of they've done the battleground assignments, top alliance champions, path assignments, and defender placements. Two key things there. But also, AQ Officer. Now, I thought this was coming in soon, but uh, or sooner than it was, but it looks like it's in development. The feature focuses on giving alliances a lot more control in organizing AQs and giving members a lot more time to view that. Map variations, boss bosses, and act uh, AQ modifiers to be available. So, yeah, it's just like standard stuff for officer, officer tools, and things like that. <clears throat> and I don't know if there's something that, you know, I, I'm not an officer, so I don't, I don't really know. I just uh, get told what my lane is and just do it. Season 19 will refresh. Yeah, they did. It wasn't. Didn't feel like a proper refresh because this is what I want to see. I want to see like AQ just uh, AW overhauled. We're going to going through our initial design phase for the Alliance Wars revamp. We're looking to completely restructure Alliance Wars and provide a more interesting experience for players. To look uh, looks to give the players more control over the challenges they create for each other and inject more strategy into them into the mode. So that that that. that that's where I kind of like draw the line that we're going we're going into this kind of um, state where we're yeah it's it's something I just don't I don't know I with alliance wars and the way that things are as I said in the past collusion uh, banning modifying game going down and stuff there's there's things that impact in the way that alliance wars is meant to be as a I wouldn't say fun because it's not really a fun experience. It's just like it's like a Q. You you just go in and do your path, and then you try and defeat the boss. But this time, yeah, it was kind of like without kind of like giving too many uh, deaths to the enemy in order to kind of like win. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it's a war. Yeah, players like it. Yes, it's it's fun for certain players, but it's as well looking at the other side of things. Like, oh right, okay, so we lost. Um, we lost the ability to continue a, a war season after five wars. What are we doing? Um, we're going to end the season now. Oh, um, right. Oh, we're going to go for the. We're going to. We've done a full war. A uh, full war season. Oh, now now um, somebody's somebody's cheated in the alliance, and we have to. They get they get banned. So the entire alliance get banned. Right. Okay. So we've just done it. We've just done a full grinding master for the last month or so, and also we've lost all those items. Great. So those are, those are hypotheticals. Then it has happened. That's the thing. I'm not saying it isn't isn't going to happen and is going to happen. The fact is, it has happened. So I I just want to. This is the thing. If like, how do they foolproof it? And the answer is, they can't. They can't foolproof it. It's the same way as uh, with YouTube. The YouTube have said like, you know, oh, um, you've got invalid traffic on your channel. How do I prevent it, YouTube? Oh, we don't know, but it will happen on your channel. So I won't get I won't get any money. Yes, and there's always no prevent it. No. No way to prevent it. Great. See, that's that's the kind of scenario we're kind of uh, we're going with here. But you know, it, it, it is what it is. And uh, as I said, it would be good to have this completely overhauled. And I thought this sort of raiding based system would be putting in instead. But uh, I guess we've got to continue on with it. Undo button. That would be cool. I'm hoping that players now are, are trying to like their best not to make mistakes. Help all. So yeah, um, that's a problem. 
Uh, that's a problem. And I said, some of you may have caught a glimpse of the help all button in game before it was ready for release. Unfortunately, we still have not developed a functioning help all button, a help all feature, but still working towards it. We're going to start with a small um, increments to help four, uh, like possibly doubling it to help eight, 16, etc. That's a compromise. Look, the last time, let's let's be honest. What what do you want in game? Do you want it working? They're going to take longer to get it working. Is help all? But at the same time, is help sixteen going to be helpful? Yes, yes, it would be. So that would be a good start. Start quote start. Uh, but that is, uh, there's more to that, I think. And the thing is, by experimenting with this, are they causing errors other, other, in other places? Especially with the way the uh, arena works currently. Sometimes players are kind of doing the help button, and then what is it doing? It's bumping you out of um, of it. So that's, again, like another thing to kind of um, understand what they're up to. Now, there are things that interest me. AQ Future. I'm not quite sure what raid bosses are. Still very early in the design process. And as well, if they've, like, so we're taking our time as we'll have a big impact on alliance quests so are these an additional thing that's the thing I, i'm not 100 percent on here like are they doing away with alliance quests to then put in raid bosses uh you know what's what's the what's the deal with that i would say that if they wanted to do anything it would be like like have it as a separate thing have it rotating like between aq and and this or maybe aw and this but it'd be interesting to find out you know what what the extent of raid bosses are and like the further kind of ideas of design and yeah uh future alliances is bright and we're excited to share more about future in 2021 so there's there's a lot more of like what they've got to do just to kind of inform us as you can see there also i think it's like credit where credit's due and they're doing better to commit to buffing up champions magneto boss has been brilliant of magneto champions being brilliant uh, not to forget the likes of Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster, I love, by the way. I know it's not the ones that they've said, oh, we're committing more. But um, there's been a lot of decent buffs. Colossus, I loved. Hulkbuster, I loved. Punisher was pretty cool. Punisher 2099. I know some players are kind of like a bit eh about it. Falcon, great champion in Abyss of Legends. Interesting. I will be interested to use that further. But, um, you know, interesting nevertheless. Gambit has been all right, apart from the percentage redu reduction on uh, prowess. But, yeah, pretty cool. So what's next? Well, I do agree that the addition of the dual class crystals has been brilliant, especially if you want specific ISO, that can be great. Uh, also the question is, where are the six star versions? Well, we're waiting to see the impact of the four and five star versions. They will come one day, but we have no ETA of their making promises. I think they'll come next year. I, I wouldn't know when, but I would guess next year. I'll probably start saving for my six star shards in January after I've done the 100% in Abyss of Legends and as well done my uh, Apocalypse Crystal opening because I want I want Apocalypse, I really do, and as well uh, some other champions with that. But the Featureds have been better, so they've improved the pools of the, of the Featured, which is great. Wish Crystal, that's still something in development as well, so I hope that that will be something seen. It says like early 2021 delay, so yeah, that should be good. Controlling how you choose your champions, communicating how it works in game may take longer than the original timeline. We aren't moving it just yet. Uh, so yeah, that's that you know. Signature stone availability, so adding more six star signature stones. Uh, and as well, the same thing with um, with five stars. Five stars, have, I've seen a lot more. Definitely in Mutant Treasure Island, definitely before then, but it lacked in Hades uh, invasions. So it would be good to see like more of those. And as well, just some more stuff. So yeah, like it was there, Mutant Treasure Island. Uh, featured a total of 80 class five star signature stone crystals so that's you know it's good it's good to have that there's definitely like um, some learning that's been going on final thing in the champion section is where those buffs are uh, and that's the thing next year looks like there's not going to be at the start of it a significant amount of buffs especially with saying here like in month one two value only updates to moderate updates Month two will be two value only updates and two modern updates. With finally month three being two complete overhauls. No mention of who those will be, but it'd be interesting to find out who they are. A lot of meme tier champions are looking to be ramped up. You know, you've got your Groots, even my guy King Groot, which has some synergy improvements, but like it's not it's not like a standalone champion. Regeneration, insane, especially in high sig. But apart from that. There's uh, nothing really going on for the champ, but uh, that hopefully there's a lot of memes that are meme tier champions that are sorted out. War Machine, you know, for example, you know, there's still Iron Fist, Diablo, although they say Diablo is fine, but it's another story for another day. Let's move on. The final section of things is Contest Evolve. This is the most interesting one for me, especially when it comes to like arena grinding, little quality of life improvements. 
and interesting development things that really show the innovation of Kabam as a developer. There are some things that I'd like to see a bit more of and I'm glad that at least they're gonna be working on stuff. Strikers, so we're still in the early stages of design. Our current priorities are to figure out how the system would work and how these new systems will interact with the existing ones. If you remember uh, of that, that GIF, or GIF, whatever you want to call it, of uh, one champion coming in once you've rooted the enemy in place, comes in, smacks the enemy, and then just exits out. Uh, it's like, it's pretty cool. I'd love to see it be put in. But um, yeah, just finding where, where we put in would be would be good. Uh, and what modes? Would this be something specific to say a variant? Could they employ this as being a champion specific thing that if you get this champion it interacts? Do you need this as a special upgrade? Will there be any premium tag to it? You know, those would be crucial things to find out where and that, it looks like Kabam trying to find that out as well on that. But uh, dual, dual target fight again, definitely needed, definitely needed. Um, We've also got Incursions. Incursions was a bit of an odd one for me because when the new Incursions came out, I was like, hey, great. But then I was like, where's the new hacks? And there were no new hacks with it. So therefore it was like, ugh, like, it's good, but it's like, it's just adding something extra to it without, ha you know, hacks as well. Like a few, like a few new hacks, maybe like, oh, I don't know, about two or three more rare hacks and then something like, uh, two or three more of the of the, of the standard ones. These are just like interest me a little bit more to it and not say it's not interesting because I think it's, Incursions is great. I just don't have time for it at the moment and I'd love to do like a quick run but it's again boils down to like is this an hour, is it an hour and a half? Where where do I lie with the extent of grind? So that's, that's another thing to bear in mind. Firewalls, matchmaking, uh, zone targets, champion refresh, timers, expiry, no zone, no cooldown. Um, I, don't know, I think I need a bit more kind of like info on that, especially with how uh, you know they're, they're, what they're doing. Mitigate massive PI diff. Oh, sorry, we're, we're now we're talking about arena. But yeah, friendship benefits and event abilities that would be good. But yeah, uh, arena improvements. The AI, yes, that's improved. Improved on the rank rewards. Yep, three star feature champion. Yep. Mitigate massive PI differentials. When we released the change in the enemy AI and rewards, we also made a change that reduced the maximum PI of the enemy team from four times your team's PI to two times your team's PI. This caused some problems with the age-old infinite streak, so we reverted the changes and are looking into further improvements of Arena. Um, I, uh, and keep the spirit of the infinite streak without requiring new players to search for. Maybe, maybe kind of like, uh, is there a way to create an infinite streak within it as opposed to finding it? Because that's the thing, it feels like we as players are finding the infinite streak rather than saying that it um, it exists in the game. And that's the thing Kabam have said, it doesn't exist. It, it shouldn't, shouldn't technically exist. But at the same time, it's like, well, you don't want to restart again from scratch. So having something that maybe after X amount of fights, it's then uh, a known thing in the game, that would be good. There's also some more to this, like uh, auto request help, which would be, which would be good. Uh, and that's in design, but again, it boils down to what effects will happen have when it's put into game. Because you know, it just seems to be the case. Something new is added in, it breaks the stuff that's in the game. Arena 2.0, the design presents a unique set of problems. We're in the process of working through them. More to come on the next update. Good. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Social progression. New social progression would allow alliance mates to complete with compete with one another across all of the game modes and earn vanity vo focused <laughs> rewards. Uh, we have decided to put this on hold. I think it's probably good to put it on hold. I don't know if it's really needed. Other stuff is more priority, like the arena stuff, which players love doing. I actually enjoy doing arena. I could quite happily sit down for five hours, put on two movies, and grind out a load of arena. I know it sounds weird to some players, but needs must. I'm sure a lot of free-to-play players do that as well. We've begun design and exploration uh, on solo competitive mode or manner of gameplay with summoners. I suppose that in some ways is the show up difficulty or some summoner showdown to a degree. So it's like you're competing against yourself. So there looks to be a lot of features and stuff like that. Um, analysis arenas, blog posts were deeper dive, committed to the growing the contest. I'd say Kabam are doing a good job. What we kind of like five months? Well, yeah, five months since they started releasing these dev diaries, and I must say, you know, there has we have seen an improvement. We can't say no, we haven't seen an improvement because we have seen an improvement. It's been listed. Those are the facts. That's the evidence. There's a lot of stuff that I like, and also a lot of stuff I don't, I dislike. I dislike a lot of the arena stuff not taking more of a uh, a push to be delivered. I could take or leave the uh, the incursion stuff, and as well, there's there's other things that they've done like the champion champion buffs and they're going on a good way about it i'm happy with 
And there's things I don't like. I don't like a lot of the Alliance-based um, stuff that they're, they're, they're doing. I have my thoughts about uh, Alliance Wars, but at the same time, you know, I like what they're doing with the event quests. However, though, more changes really need to be made to certain Act 6 um, yeah, chapters and missions, and as well, stuff needs to be done to the rewards of Cavalier um, event quests on a monthly basis, and as well, these challenges, uh, these objectives. So yeah, there's 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 loads of things that I like, loads of stuff that I dislike. Go to the forums and have your say on some of the things as well. Um, whether or not you feel that Kibam are missing the point in some things, but getting it in others. Are you happy as well with what they're what they're doing, or you're not happy with what they've done so far? And and do you think feel positively about where they're going with the game? I personally feel quite content with it, as long as this is definitely completed say in the first couple of months of January, I think I can take or leave it um, with other stuff in mind, other games that I'll be interested in playing uh, and personal interests. I'm kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm chilled with it, but at the same time, I can see it from other perspectives. End game players are gonna be like, look, where's my end game content? I need to see other stuff. So um, yeah, that's really my two cents. And thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon. Check out some content up there, bye-bye.